Cooperative Learning by Angie Fernie, Allison Richardson, and Hilary Ritt. Mrs. Solomon teaches a ninth grade careers class. This class is made up of students who are average, honor students, also ESOL students, and some students with special needs, including learning disabilities. Mrs. Solomon has tried three different teaching methodologies, lecture, computer-based, and group work. When Mrs. Solomon lectured, many students fell asleep, most would not discuss the class material, and many were also disrespectful to her as she lectured. Computer-based did pique some of the students' interest, but many students were off task, such as playing games or playing on the internet. Also, students weren't interacting with each other, so Mrs. Solomon feared that she wasn't promoting the interpersonal skills that they would need in the workplace. Mrs. Solomon also tried group work. She allowed the students to pick their own groups, so many were off task. Social problems, such as the aforementioned arguments, escalated. Test grades fell, and students tended to group with other students of like ability levels. Mrs. Solomon sought a solution. In order to find the solution, she talked to an outstanding the teacher in her department. This teacher suggested that Mrs. Solomon try cooperative learning. Cooperative learning is when students work together to attain group goals that cannot be obtained by working alone or competitively. This learning methodology actively involves students in the learning process in a social setting. It's based on a constructivist epistemology and uses ideas gained from Vygotsky, Piaget, and Coberg. The theoretical framework for cooperative learning is twofold. The first is motivational. Students feel as if their group is depending on them to succeed, and so they don't want to let their group down. They'll rise to the challenge. The other theoretical framework is cognitive. Students must think critically to accomplish the group task. Also, through repetition and discussion, students tend to remember the concepts better. Cooperative learning is different than collaborative learning, and also similar in some ways. The similarity is that both learning theories assign specific tasks, use groups, and require students to share and compare. The differences are that collaborative learning has British roots, and students work together to explore a concept. Cooperative learning, on the other hand, has American roots. It's traced back to John Dewey, Dewey and students work together, but they're assessed both individually and as a group. Thus, they have accountability towards their group but also individual accountability. In deciding to implement cooperative learning, teachers must first prepare. They can do this by observing other effective instructors. This person could act as a mentor to the teacher who is deciding to implement cooperative learning. Also, reading about the topic to decide whether this is the right choice or how to implement cooperative learning. Another way to decide to implement cooperative learning is to attend a workshop or seminar. This workshop or seminar should be hands-on, and it should also be ongoing. The pre-implementation stage involves what the teacher should do once he or she has decided to implement cooperative learning. And it includes specifying the instructional objectives of cooperative learning. Um, this is telling the students and the teacher the benefits of this process. Next, determine the size and assign groups. They can be homogeneous or heterogeneous, but should remain the same through many tasks so that students can develop working skills together. The teacher must also arrange the room accordingly. This means optimizing space so that students can move around comfortably. The teacher must next plan instructional materials that promote students working together. This involves assigning instructional materials where each student has something to offer. Also, group roles should be determined. Students may decide to choose their own role, or the teacher may assign roles. It just depends on the task and the teacher's preference. The teacher should then assign the task. This should be something interesting and challenging and the teacher should explain the criteria to succeed. This is generally done through a rubric, which may be designed solely by the teacher or by the teacher and the class together. 
During the implementation stage of cooperative learning, students and instructor have different responsibilities. The responsibilities of the students include working together, listening to the teacher and to each other, questioning the teacher and each other, keeping records of their work and their progress, of course, producing a product, and assuming personal responsibility for their role within the group. The instructor's responsibilities include monitoring behavior. This includes circling the classroom so as to monitor each group individually. The instructor should intervene where necessary, showing the students how to prevent problems. The instructor should also assist or scaffold. This includes um, suggesting additional resources or differing points of view. The instructor should also offer praise when the students are doing well. Post-implementation of cooperative learning, the instructor should provide closure through summarization. The instructor can do this for the entire group or have each group prepare a short presentation to present to the entire group. But somehow, the project should be summarized. Here are some help helpful hints for cooperative learning lessons. Don't jump right into cooperative learning when first implementing it into the class. In other words, don't choose a large project when first implementing. This can be done in a smaller homework or classwork setting for the most part, or at least in the beginning. Next, use only pairs for cooperative learning in the beginning. When students are just adjusting to this process or this instructional methodology, you tend to get more participation when the group is made up of just two students. Also, in the beginning, the cooperative learning task should not be longer than one class period. Students may not be experienced with monitoring their own time and their own work schedule. So starting small is the best way to start. Also, the instructor should use worksheets for accountability at first. This is a guide, again, for those students who are inexperienced in this instructional methodology. There are many forms of cooperative groups. Anytime students are working together to achieve a common goal, you essentially have a cooperative group. So some of these are pair and share, in which students take turns stating an opinion and listening to each other to discuss a topic. The next is jigsaw, in which each member of a group goes off to learn about a topic. The group then comes together, and each student has a responsibility to teach the other members of the group about that topic. A split class discussion is good for debates, in which half the class is of one opinion, half of another opinion. Uh, random groups of three, ability, interest, and friendship groups are good when it's an assignment that must be completed outside of the classroom, because these friends or interest groups generally maybe have more opportunity to meet up outside of the classroom. Diversity groups are good where each group needs many different opinions, many different angles on a topic. Something in history or politics would work well with a diversity group. Multi-age groups generally have older students acting as mentors for younger students or teaching younger students something. Peer-led conferences, three-step interview, three review, numbered heads, team pair solo, circle the stage, structured problem solving, send a problem, and drill review pairs are also all different formats of choosing groups and organizing groups in order to carry out a cooperative learning assignment. There are many benefits of cooperative learning. The first is that cooperative learning promotes social interaction. These skills include leadership, decision making, trust building, communication, and conflict, conflict management. Students will explain a topic to their group mates and discuss a topic, so oral skills will be improved. Also, the cooperative group can act as a social support system for students. Everyone's involved. Other peers, the instructor, and the parents are involved. Cooperative learning can have psychological benefits as well. Students feel safe and confident within the group oftentimes. The self-esteem can be increased because feedback or errors are not directed at one individual. They're directed to the group as a whole. The classmates or groupmates feel as if they have a whole group to rely on rather than just themselves. 
Also, grades can increase due to higher self-efficacy. Encouragement from instructors and peers can help students. In addition, by discussing topics and repeating ideas multiple times, the ideas are more firmly in the memory of the student. Assessment is also a benefit of cooperative learning. The assessment provides instant feedback, and grades are not solely dependent on tests and individual assignments. Cooperative learning oftentimes gives students a way of really showing what their attributes are, what, what their great skills are. Cooperative learning was implemented in Ms. Solomon's classroom, and some of the effects were an increase in student attendance, fewer classroom disruptions, reduction in classroom violence, diversity awareness, social and academic acceptance of special needs students, students with different learning abilities, and ESL students. This is especially helpful because cooperative learning is usually easily adapted. Fewer arguments among students was another benefit of cooperative learning because students are working together to attain a common goal, so they're less likely to argue. Also, the teacher is teaching conflict resolution throughout the experience through circulating and facilitating. There were more discussions among students, hence more diversity awareness. They came to appreciate each other more. Also, there was less disrespect towards the instructor. The instructor had more time to talk to students individually, explaining policies and procedures. There are also drawbacks to cooperative learning. The first of these is a loss of control. Instructors oftentimes are experts in their field and impart knowledge on the students. Some instructors feel a loss of control with cooperative learning because they're not showcasing their knowledge and they don't have control over what information is being imparted on their students. Some instructors feel like they're not sure exactly what the students have learned or what they know. In addition, group work can be problematic. Some students may resist this because during group work, they're forced to put forward more effort than they are during a lecture. During lecturing, students aren't forced to participate and oftentimes can be lazy. During group work, students do have to interact and participate, and oftentimes they don't want to do that. In addition, students often don't want their grade to be dependent on the work of other students. Time requirements can be problematic as well. This is time requirements in terms of planning and in terms of the time taken to complete assignments. Also, assessment can be a challenge in cooperative learning. Many teachers are used to giving traditional tests or papers, but in cooperative learning, these oftentimes are not effective, and teachers must find alternate ways to assess learning.